happened, obviously what happened in, in autumn, but slowly also in winter and now in spring is that the media also plays a, a very important role in that. Mainstream media is not reporting of all those initiatives or organizations or activists and not reporting about all the successes that they also gained out of this um, movement. What they do is that they, they don't uh, report from the huge so social movements we see now in France, for example. There are so many people on the streets in France protesting. There are so many people in Macedonia, for example, protesting against anti uh, having protests of anti-corruption. And nobody is telling these stories. Hello. Hello. My name is Sol Trumbo. I work for the Transnational Institute uh, in Amsterdam. I'm originally from Spain. I'm here in Vienna, um, among other reasons, because there is a DN25 meeting uh, this evening. Uh, this DN25 meeting is focused on uh, the refugee movement and the migrant movement, uh, which recently has been uh, very relevant in Austria. And I'm here with Fanny. Yes, my name is Fanny Mulugori. I'm actually um, working as a researcher f for critical theories of racism. And I'm also an activist, and I think this is why I was invited today. I'm an activist in a, in a joint um, organization it's called Moving Europe. It's, a, it's, a, it's an organization and it's a project we uh, started with in the end of October to follow up the uh, migration and refugee movement to also deliver together with people who are on this route, who were on this route traveling, to deliver independent information because one of the problems is also that people don't get um, the right information from the administrations, for example. And also we document and monitor and talk to people and to see what they need. Mm -hmm. Yes, Austria was uh, in the headlines a few months ago because there was a closure of solidarity movements, people using their own cars, defying the law, to helping refugees to, to cross the border. And now we see that uh, a border has been militarized in Austria, that a far-right uh, presidential candidate have, has strong possibilities to win. What has changed in, in this time? I mean, I think we can, we can um, talk about this story in different ways. I can have a different take on this, a uh, different approach on it. And I think before we talk about the far right, it's also necessary to see what you said. There were a lot of people in Austria being activated, being active in the uh, so-called solidarity movement, but also people from the refugee movement. And not only for the last year, but especially uh, since the summer of migration. And it's a completely different uh, social composition than we've seen before. And it's not only in Austria, as we know, but a lot of people were driving through the whole Balkan states and trying to um, and uh, somehow um, support the struggle of migrants, um, questioning and challenging the borders and the border regime of the EU. And there were so many people within this welcoming um, movement. And I think the important uh, thing is to see that there are still people who build from those experiences. And a lot mm. of people got politicized within this uh, movement and movements maybe. And also a lot of structures, initiatives, organizations that started maybe in uh, summer or autumn or winter, winter, they're still very active and very much on the s level of the city maybe or of the municipal level. Also, they have been that, have done that before, also in networks, anti-racist networks. And I think we also need to see that these structures are still there and these um, new practices people um, experience are still there and there are new social experiments on all those levels and they are still there and still fighting. What happened, obviously, what happened in, in autumn, but slowly also in winter and now in spring, is that the media also plays a, a very important role in that. Mainstream media is not reporting of all those initiatives or organizations or activists and not reporting about all the successes that they also gained out of this um, movement. What they do is that they, they don't uh, report from the huge so social movements we see now in France, for example. There are so many people on the streets in France protesting. 
There are so many people in Macedonia, for example, protesting against anti, uh, having protests of anti-corruption, and nobody is telling these stories right now. And these are stories who also question not only the the system or the national uh, parties or whatever, but also they ask uh, they fight and struggle for social rights, mm -hmm. for the labor market as well, for education, for housing, but also now for uh, a new kind of citizenship, which is obviously needed, mm -hmm. and, and citizenship from below. So the media is not really telling these stories. Those movements are still, these movements are still uh, valid. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of experience we can build on. But yes, the far right and also the disappointment of EU or the nation states or the EU policies as an answer or the answers they gave to the refugee movement or the refugee policies, asylum policies or answers given to austerity politics over the last decade almost already. Those are big disappointments and also the far right used this and it eased the way for the far right also, uh, also through the last decade if you want to, over the mm -hmm. last two decades already. So this is nothing really new but now there's a lot of um, focus on that and obviously those movements also have to to see what can be done against this far right um, mm -hmm. uprising, which is a, a result of many years, not just the last year. Yeah, yeah. Part of, of my work as National Institute, and also as part of my activism in the last years, I have been involved in pan-European uh, initiatives. No, that for many uh, is seen as the minimum level of struggle, like Blockupy or the Alter Summit. Uh, it has been very encouraging to see all these all these solidarity networks because you could feel that for many European citizens it was the first time they got politicized because they could really uh, relate with the situation of refugees. I remember coming to the Amsterdam Central Station with people with uh, banners saying "Welcome refugees, ready to to give information." No, and and you could see that for the first time they were active politically. So this has been really important. How do you see? this new solidarity networks fitting and working together with other movements that have been working with social labor rights in Europe in the last years? I actually, again, I see the success of, of maybe, or maybe this is the field where uh, new politics or new solutions can be born because there's a uh, huge experience of those people together with self-organized um, uh, mig mig uh, migrant organizations, initiatives with um, the whole experience of the very strong uh, refugee movement and those people who get um, politicized right now, especially when there's the crisis going on and the answers of the EU or uh, the nation states around the EU are not giving uh, a really an offer for those people. The, the gap between um, the uh, EU policies and also from, from the national level, the policies and the, the gap for, for between the experience and the everyday life of those people who got uh, involved and these are like millions of people there are like millions of people within Europe not only in the EU states who got activated through the last year who yeah. were actually doing really good and a lot of um, refugee work um, refugee support work and also work together with uh, migrants and refugees in this sense. So there's a lot of, um, I think, knowledge now where people can see EU policies has nothing to do with my everyday life, has nothing to do with my uh, precariousness, with mm -hmm. my uh, uh, approach on how to participate, not only socially, but also politically in, mm -hmm. in the uh, politics of the EU. So I think there's this gap is as huge as it has never been before, or it hasn't been that huge, this gap. In this, I'm sure for the last decades, and I think we don't, we shouldn't underestimate all those um, people who are, you know, um, key political actors. I think in how to change also, not only to talk about racism and the rise of the far right, but also to imagine new ways of um, a different kind of Europe, a Europe of solidarity. I think we have to take this seriously, and I also think these are these are the people who will say no to the far right at one point and no to the EU mi migration management and um, refugee policies. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, I, I agree with you. And also, yeah, we have this, this battle of ideas, no? I, um, in terms of which issues we, we are now willing to discuss or not. Because for instance, the, the, um, the critic towards the European Union from the left was a very marginal position. 
uh, now is getting more and more important, mm -hmm. especially in countries like Greece or Spain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but we are a bit late in the sense that in many countries the discourse criticizing the European Union is dominated by the by the far right. So it's definitely a battle to 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 have there, and also in issues like Islamophobia, for instance, that is is getting so normalized in many instances that it could be compared with anti-Semitism 80 years ago. So there, there is, and, and this of course connects in how many people don't 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 feel uh, they have to demand strong uh, policies to their governments in relation to to, to refugees. Uh, and so in, in this battle of ideas, and maybe connecting me what you were saying with the media now, I know we are in this initiative Tal Real, uh, trying to, to use co new communication ways to, 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 to create spaces of discussion, of, 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 mm -hmm. of promoting new, new ways of thinking, of, mm -hmm. of action. Mm -hmm. how, how, do you, yeah. how, how do you see the, this? I would say, do you even get a step further and, and provide resources? Because now mm. European-wide or in different countries, people talk about alternatives obviously and then w if we can also learn from history so if you have if we um, check out social movements there's always also uh, uh, some some kind of uh, fallback and there's also the the right wing and the far right movements they have very easy answers to very complex um, society society questions or social questions this is nothing new but yes we have to see now how can we actually strengthen all those experiences and all those um, new also social experiments we saw within initiatives in the city in the municipalities etc mm -hmm. and how to strengthen those and not only have the battles of ideas and ideolo ideology but also see the social composition is quite different than we expected maybe from other social movements um, and to take this this also seriously, but also to have uh, have an idea from the left or for the radical left that also if we work together with liberals or conservatives, that still we have to win the fights about uh, the ideas of um, how um, ownership or property rights should be divided. This is nothing we could leave to liberal ideas, right? So this mm -hmm. is also part of the movement right now, and I think. Um, to take it seriously, what happened also in history with uh, right-wing movements, of, of course they are strong because they have the wrong answers to very, very complex um, questions which are important for ex especially times of crisis. And as you said, there is a rise of racism, of a specific racism. And this is also why I think it's, it's uh, not so easy to, for the people or the public opinion to connect the protests now in France or Macedonia with um, the migration movement and the uh, experiences within, uh, I don't know, where people live right now, because it's not in the same um, parameters, like it's not about Europe and Islam and terrorism, right? Mm -hmm, so it's yeah. about the social questions. And also when we talk about a new left movement or also populist uh, left, if you say so, we have to talk about specific offers and to strengthen also all those networks and uh, initiatives and organizations with resources because obviously the far right always has the best better resources mm -hmm. so this is something we need to think and talk about not only in the media but on the ground mm -hmm. in the cities also together with uh, the governmental admi administration so there has to be a new idea also for or we have to see what happened so there are also uh, alliances mm -hmm. new alliances um, uh, within also governmental ideas for new governance we can think about that and I think it's the time to see how citizenship from below really can be implemented also as a demand for a new left yeah. movement yeah absolutely agree and I think spaces like the one organized in Vienna could be one of the venues to to seek for these alliances there are of course others in uh, the European level so very nice to meet you here and uh, I hope we the struggle together. <laughs> Thank you, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs>